Dave, where are we? We're at the Holiday Inn on Cerritos Road in what, Santa Fe. What time is it? It is uh, 6.50. Uh, and uh, in a few minutes we'll be talking to Congressman Steve Pierce about his U.S. Senate campaign. Talk about some issues, some politics. Hopefully get some good video of the Congressman to put up on the web. And, uh, you know, hopefully I stay awake. Yeah, I'm pretty tired too. <laughs> I'm Steve Pierce. I'm running for United States Senate. Do you think here locally uh, it's right to be um, you know, trying to uh, explore some of these uh, maybe uh, pockets here in the Galisteo Basin here in Santa Fe County? Absolutely. I uh, have always supported uh, drilling where we can. I have not supported drilling everywhere. I think that the technology exists where we can, can uh, protect the groundwater. We can be pretty uh, unobtrusive. We can, uh, can keep things out of sight. I will tell you that, that the whole idea that, yeah, we want energy, but I don't want to produce it in my backyard is one of the most serious problems that we face today. We continue to limit our own access to our own oil and gas, and that causes us to buy more from Hugo Chavez. If we want to support Hugo Chavez, if we want to support the, the Middle Eastern regimes that are trying to uh, annihilate us, now that's a decision that we have to ask ourselves why. Our unwillingness to drill off the uh, off the coast of this country is is going to cost us dramatic increases in in our utilities and in the the amount that we pay for gasoline in the car. And the question is going to come down to eventually how much are you willing to pay for your gasoline? Right now we're not drilling off the coast of Florida, and yet Cuba is allowing China to come in and drill in the same waters that we won't allow ourselves to drill in. It just doesn't make sense why China can produce those assets and we disallow ourselves to. Those get to be the root of the, uh, of the, the conversation. I was told not too long ago that here in Santa Fe, uh, and this was from a, a, a Mexican uh, business owner uh, who has a chain of grocery stores here in town, I asked him to estimate how many uh, undocumented folks he believes are here in this town. The Census Bureau says there's about 70,000, uh, you know, citizens here in, in Santa Fe, his estimate to me was over 20,000 uh, uh, undocumented immigrants in this town. If you go on the south side, not, you know, where we kind of down Airport Road, you'll see, you know, the, the whole landscape is, has kind of been transformed in these last few years. Should those 20,000 be deported? I don't think one size fits all. I don't think we can round everybody up with a pickup truck, deport them with these shocking sticks. Uh, also, I'm very opposed to amnesty. I don't think we should have a generalized amnesty program. If a person is here illegally, don't think there ought to be some punishment mechanism, but they should be allowed to uh, be required to get legal, get out of the shadows, uh, get on the tax rolls, uh, stop working in the cash economy, let us take taxes because you're getting benefits, you have the benefit of police protection, you drive on the highways, whatever. The first thing we need to do is to secure the border, stop the problem from getting worse. That's the piece that causes great emotion. Great emotion causes less than perfect answers on other things. Uh, and so stop the thing that causes the great emotion, that is the flow of people and the concern that Al-Qaeda, concern that Iraqis are coming across the southern border, unfriendly Iraqis. And those are things that are legitimate problems for us. It would actually be pretty easy to do. Secondly, fix legal, legal immigration. It takes uh, up to 20 years to find out if you can come here legally. Our office deals with as much immigration as any office uh, nationwide, uh, and we hear that frequently. The average is 13 years. When people have to wait 13 years, they say we're going to go illegally. 
So we first of all fix the border, stabilize the problem where it's not getting worse. Then we take the pressure away from the border by giving people a legitimate answer, and we should be able to give that answer within months, not years. I would guarantee that many of the people would never bring their families. If they could cross back and forth, just come here and work, leave their families there where they got the support structure, they would never bring their families. So we make the problem much worse because we bring in and we let the, the, the father get here illegally. Yeah. And then uh, they know they can't cross back over, so they bring their family. Then we find the father. We deport him. Now we got the family down in southern New Mexico. We got 18 and 20 people living in a trailer uh, with no source of income. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a very bad solution that we've come up with, and we could do it a lot better. Here in Santa Fe, we have the legislative session going on. The main issue that the governor has, has kind of put on the top of the agenda is health care reform. He has a universal health care proposal. Um, is there anything about uh, Governor Richardson's plan to, to bring health care to New Mexicans uh, in that plan that, that you like? No, I think the idea of socialized medicine and government medicine is is a fallacy. I do not think it's possible to do it. He's going to have to take more money from you. He's not going to take it uh, from the people who aren't working. So the, the workers are going to have to come up with more money, and we're out of budget money right now for Medicaid. It's, uh, that's the problem you run into when you began to let the government pay more and more, and that was the whole S-chip debate. The whole S-chip thing was we're going to let adults in, adults up to 82,000, and we're going to let illegals into this program for kids. At some point, it's not a program for kids. It's just a socialized medicine scheme that, uh, that why don't we call it what it is? Uh, let's have a debate on the, you know, on the merits or the demerits of the program. But I don't think that, uh, that government medicine works. I think that there's a cleaner, better way. Let me buy my own insurance. You buy your own insurance. What about folks who can't afford? They uh, already be able, Don't make enough to, to qualify for public assistance through Medicaid, but but uh, but make but don't make too much to qualify for public assistance, but not enough to to actually afford uh, private insurance. What about them? At some point, we have a personal responsibility. Uh, I don't think there's anybody in this country today that can't get help. If I can get you, go ahead and. Uh, so Dave, how'd it go? He's clearly a, a knowledgeable uh, kind of legislative veteran, although he's only been in the Congress since 2002, or three, I guess. He won in 02. Um, very conservative. Uh, it's impressive that he's that he's going out and talking to folks, say here in Santa Fe, who are probably not going to vote for him come the general if he does win the primary. So you got to give him credit for that, being open and answering questions, uh, you know, some of the answers uh, a bit, uh, you know, contrary to maybe where I come down on a lot of things, but, um, you know, I give him, I give him points for, for answering the questions for the most part. It's cold, let's get in the car. <laughs>